Hi, I'm Tiago, and here I am again with my weekly art history series. And today, this is all about Frida Kahlo, a great Mexican self-portrait artist that is still a feminist icon and is one of my favorite painters of all time. So, let's get right into it and start from the beginning. Frida Kahlo was born in 1907 in Mexico City. Her father, Wilhelm, was a German photographer who immigrated to Mexico, and there he met her mother and they married. Around the age of six, she contracted polio, a disease that damaged her leg and foot and made her limp. Her father, after that, encouraged her to play soccer, to swim and to wrestle. That was very unusual for a girl at that time. However, the idea was to help her with her recovery. In 1922, Kawo entered the National Preparatory School and was one of the few female students to attend that school. At that time, she became known for her young spirit and love for traditional and colorful clothes and jewelry. At the same year, a very famous muralist called Diego Rivera went to work on a project at that school, and it is told that during that same time, she fell in love with him. While at school, Frida was traveling on a bus when it collided with a car and Frida was impaled by a steel handrail that went through her hip and came out the other way. She also had several other injuries like fractures on her spine and pelvis. After staying at the Red Cross Hospital in Mexico City for several weeks, Kawa returned home to recuperate, and she began painting. She became politically active, joining the Young Communist League and the Mexican Communist Party. Kawa reconnected with Rivera in 1928 as he encouraged her artwork, and the two began a relationship. They married the next year, Rivera traveled a lot with his art, and as a result of that, they lived in San Francisco, where Kahlo showed her paintings, Frida and Diego Rivera, at the San Francisco Society of Women Artists. They also went to New York City for Rivera's show at the Museum of Modern Art. Frida incorporated more graphic and surrealist elements in her work, as shown in her painting Henry Ford Hospital from 1932, where a naked cowl appears in a hospital bed with a fetus, a snail, and a pelvis floating around her and connected to her by vein-like strings. Cowell and Rivera sang in New York City in 1933 was surrounded by controversy. Commissioned by Nelson Rockefeller, Rivera created a mural called Man at the Crossroads in the RCA building at the Rockefeller Center. However, Rockefeller stopped the work on the project after Rivera included a portrait of the Cumanist leader Vladimir Lenin in the mural which was later painted over and after this the couple returned to Mexico. They never had a traditional union. They kept separate nearby homes and studios. She was also devastated by Rivera's many infidelities, included an affair with her sister, and in response to this family betrayal, she cut most of her trademark long walks. While she never considered herself a surrealist, Kao befriended one of the primary figures of that artistic movement, Andre Breton, in 1938. That same year, she had a major exhibition at a New York City gallery, selling half of the 25 paintings shown there, and also received two commissions, including one from the famous magazine editor Claire Boothwoods. In 1939, Kao went to live in Paris for a time. There she exhibited some of her paintings and developed friendships with famous artists like Marcel Duchamp and Pablo Picasso. She divorced Rivera later that year. During this time, she painted one of her most famous works, The Two Fridas, in 1939. Oddly, Kao and Rivera didn't stay divorced for long as they remarried in 1940. Despite her personal challenge, her work continued to grow in popularity, and it was included in numerous group shows, and at that time she became very famous. In 1944, Kao painted the broken column, which depicted a nearly nude Frida, split down in the middle, revealing her spine as a shattered decorative column. 
Her health issues became severe in 1950 after being diagnosed with gangrene in her right foot. Despite this, she continued to paint and support political causes. In 1953, Cao received her first solo exhibition in Mexico. She was bedridden at that time, but she did not miss the exhibition's opening, arriving in an ambulance, and spending the evening talking and celebrating in a bed that was set up for her in the gallery. Now, I call that commitment. About a week after her 47th birthday, Cowell died in 1954 at her beloved Blue House. Since her death, Cowell's fame as an artist has only grown. Her house was opened as a museum in 1958, and the feminist movement of the 1970s led to a renewal interest in her life and work. In 1983, a book called A Biography of Frida Kahlo also helped to grow her popularity. More recently, a film of her life was made in 2002 in a movie called Frida starring Selma Hayek and Alfred Molina. Now what inspires me the most besides her amazing talent and appealing color treatment is the way she used art as a healing process and the way that it gave her life. I truly do believe that she needed art as much as she did breeding, and that kind of passion is what I use as reference for my daily motivation. So now I want to invite you to watch some of the paintings that are the most iconic of hers and the ones that I believe to be the most emotional. Thank you so much for watching, I hope you enjoyed this video. As you know, I do this art history series every Sunday, so I would like to encourage you to subscribe so that you don't miss an episode. So see you on the next one, and have a great time. Bye!